What's going on everybody, it's KJ Chaos. In this video we're going to talk about the biggest secrets and hidden easter eggs that are actually in the game. Uh, so there's seven of them that are the biggest ones that I think. So oh, let's go ahead and get right off to it. So Radagascar the Squirrel, um, so this one's actually a really cool thing, that ability that your son can actually do. Um, it's at the top of the Light Elf Outpost. If you ever, if you're in there, you have to solve a few puddle, puzzles, uh, beat some enemies, and seal a round tear. And at the very top, there's a gold chest like normal, the ones that have like the best loot or whatever in it. Uh, it contains the ability for Atreus to summon Radagasker, a mouthy squirrel who seeks out items for you. Um, if you if you have the light arrow selected, Radagasker will bring up Radagasker. I'm pretty sure that's how his name is spelled. Anyways, you go. He gets uh, health stones. You have that out. Shock arrows. He brings out rage stones. I like using rage stones more because I like being able to beat the shit out of people and gain health at the same time. Like pretty much he throws f bombs and like cusses at you and all this type of stuff and time you bring him out it's such a lot of fun he has rare abilities and benefits that benefits you outside of combat as well as in it's always worth picking up in my opinion guys he's purely destroyed because I don't, I don't think Sony would just highlight the particular piece in game uh, when presenting it um, so it's a well-kept God of War secret as well most people that uh, haven't found it but is at the elf light post so as you see here, he has. I'm bringing up everything that he actually can bring up and all that. Um, so next is the secret ending at the end of the game. So after you beat the actual game, uh, you can go to your. You go back to your house after you actually go to Jotunheim. You go back to your house and he says, "Hey, let's rest." So you just go ahead and go rest, and then uh, he'll come. Up, there'll be a dream that actually happens. That's like three years in the future. That's uh, it's pretty much not just a dream. It's actually him seeing into the future. So that's one of his abilities as well that he can actually see in the future of major events. I'm guessing that'll happen. So yeah, after you scatter uh, Faya's ashes from the highest peak in the realms, there's still an open world for you to explore and tame. So just go back to your house. Um, just go back to Wild Woods, hop into bed, earn some rest, and the screen will flame black. And you cut several years later, as you see here. I'll go ahead and uh, be quiet so you guys can actually hear. Yeah, they kind of give you clues to head home, Keeper. <laughs> but, like, if you're going home... Oh damn, it is snowing. Holy shit, that's weird. Anyway. I never would have thought to return home, though, unless I was going there for some. But let's see if there's something here. Atreus, are you ready? Yeah, but... I had the weirdest dream. Fimble winter was ending, and Thor came for us, here at the house. It was only a dream. But it felt different. It felt real. It felt like... the future. Then we will worry about it tomorrow. Today. There are still things. Alright guys, next, so if you guys actually beat all the Valkyries and you beat the Valkyrie Queen, uh, if you haven't beat her yet, she is a, uh, she's pretty much... She tells you, hey, I'm not the Valkyrie Queen. Um, Freya is. I mean, Freya. Uh, whenever you go there, Kiyosh is like, yeah, I'm not the Valkyrie Queen. And then Mermir is like, hey, yeah, Freya is actually the Valkyrie Queen. So uh, if you defeat them, yeah, you post it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much what it is. She's actually the real queen. So you don't really fight the real queen, but this is kind of like a mandatory one that actually was put there that replaced her after she actually left Odin and all that. So yeah, after you investigate more, Murmur, I finally tell you that no other than Freya has uh, was seen looking for her wings and, so, and pretty much pretty much saying that hey, she's gonna try to find them so she can kill you. And he pretty much tells you that because uh, uh, whenever you're in Jotunheim, you actually when you come back down, you see that the dwarves actually leave the head there, Murmur there. So when you pick him up later on, he's like, hey, uh, Freya came and visited me while you guys were in Jotunheim, and she said, hey, trying to find out where her wings were. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much 
what that is saying is that she's not the real queen, that actually Freya was the real queen, and when she left, Odin made her the actual mandatory queen. I'll go ahead and let you guys listen to the rest of this. Sigrun, I'm sorry for being so worthless. I could have done something, or tried at the very least. What will you do now? I must reunite with my sisters. Together we can restore balance to the realms. You have the eternal blessings of the Valkyries. Next, guys, um, Baldor, the secret, the stranger that you find. His actual name is Baldor. He is Freya's son, the uh, witch that you guys run into later on. Uh, it's pretty much made clear by the end of the game, but those who just want to know straight away, Baldur is the god who visits at uh, Kratos at the beginning and goads him into an epic fight. Uh, whenever you first get there, you think he's looking for Kratos or he's looking for uh, his son, but he's not. He's actually looking for Freya because she put a spell on him that makes it where he can't feel nothing, as you've seen here, I put in here. He also, she also, trying to, she's trying to mend her relationship with him because, um, because... Cause like he's mad at her and wants to kill her because he can't feel anything, so she like she will even die for him. Like that's, like that's how like much she she wants to mend this relationship with him because he hates her and he just wants to kill her and she would so will die at his hand to try to make him love her or want to want to, like accept her as his mother again. And next, guys, where does Kratos fit into, into the Norse lore? Uh, it's kind of like a fish out of water. Um, it's, it's really weird because he's a Greek god. I was wondering the same thing. Uh, how does he fit into Norse mythology if he's Greek? But in fact, he's more at home than you think. Um, in the more room in Jotunheim, you'll find that many of the pictures have associated names next to the characters spit out in runic alphabet used in various Germanic languages. On uh, the morals that depict the father and son, you'll see uh, Atreus bear the name... Uh, I don't know what the fuck that says because it's not. I don't know how to speak that, but it translates to Loki. Uh, if you guys haven't known yet, Loki is uh, actually Atreus. Pretty much what they uh, confirmed him at the end. So he's pretty much king of the frost giants because he's the very last one. His mother was the last giant, but then now he is. Uh, so anyways, however, Kratos has quite a different name. One he may not be familiar with. Uh, the moral shows that next to the name God of War as Kent. I don't know how to pronounce that, which translates to. Fur uh, beauty, which may, this might sound like might, might not sound like much, but it's actually the name of the meaning according to poems from the Viking era and Norse literature. Uh, Fur beauty is in fact Jotnar or giant, and not just Jotnar, but but the husband of Lafay, the father of Loki himself. So Kratos' insertion into the Norse lore sort of checks out in this regard. While he may not be a giant, he is indeed husband of Lafay or Fay, as he calls her in the game. This also makes sense considering that we find out about uh, Atreus and Jotunheim, it's his other name. Alright, so next on the list is a prophecy hidden in plain sight. So when you arrive in Jotunheim and reveal the morals of the prophecy that you forbid you that forbid your entire adventure, you may be surprised to find this isn't the first time you've seen these. Recall back to your first sight with a stranger, there comes a point where you unleash Spartan Rage and throw him against a large stone slab that you eventually slam onto your opponent. As you see here that I am showing in the video. Uh, that's pretty much it. You can't really see it because it's really faded. But however, this giant stone is covering in writing, and not just any writing. If you step back during the battle, uh, you're pretty much invincible during Spartan Rage, you can admire the giant stone and the very similar, uh, same morals that were in Jotunheim, although faded. That depict, along other things, your final battle with the very same person you are currently fighting. You can also see the moral of the giant Thamir, or Thamir, Thamir. Uh, and up at the top right corner as the part where you sell out of Helheim on a flying boat. Um, so that's that's actually really cool. I didn't notice that. I had to play through again to actually see it. Uh, so next on the list is Kratos sees death again. This is pretty much this is the last one also, uh, last Easter egg or hidden secret. So Kratos sees death again within the same scene at the end of the game. Kratos spots a per, uh, partially covered conclusion to the giant's prophecy. It depicts a dead Kratos being held by uh, Atreus. Something is coming out of Atreus' mouth, perhaps a scream or anguish of some future magic he'll be capable of. As Atreus notes, everything else the giants prophesize has come to pass, but Kratos has defied fate many times, literally killing the fates, in fact, and changing the course of destiny in almost routine, is almost routine for him. Uh, there are undoubtedly some hard challenges ahead for the two of them, but what could actually kill Kratos? A uh, god killer in chief, the dean, uh, the dean of the side, what could the Norse gods that uh, Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, and uh, Kronos, and the other Greek gods could not do? After defeating Baldur and seeing Freya willing to die for her son, even at the hands 
Atreus asks if Kratos would do the same. He says yes, he would die if it meant Atreus could live. Um, so pretty much it seems like Kratos would die in such a simple way as defeating by a Norse god, but in a poet, poetic justice of sacrificing himself where Atreus could fit. Or it could be Atreus who kills him. While still young, Atreus uh, displayed ideological, physiological differences during his brief stint as a egomaniac, claiming he could judge. He should die and he shouldn't because he was right. Perhaps those differences was high stakes and could result in Kratos' death. Uh, such an end would be fitting a continuation of cycle and petricide, and no Pantheon seems to be able to escape. Well guys, that's pretty much it. That's uh, top 7 easter eggs and hidden secrets in the game that you can actually find and f and uh, discover for yourself if you want, but it's right here on this video. And guys, that's pretty much it for this video. That's all I got for you right now. And anyways guys, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and I will see you guys next time. I will be the